Okay, we're going to walk through the user interface today for the Open Exchange software stack. And uh, the first thing you do when you get to the, uh, the software is you're presented with a login, so I'll log in with my account. This takes you a page that allows you to select a set of work groups to start provisioning circuits, but the first thing we're going to do is go into the administrative interface and see how discovery works. The switch and the circuits that connect those switches to other switches are automatically discovered and allowed, uh, and the system allows you to verify that they're ready for production and import them into the system so they can be used by users to provision circuits across. So the system has discovered this switch in Seattle, which it didn't know about before, but uh, but is found out about through the discovery process in the software stack. So if I want to bring this switch into the network and allow users to provision across it, I click the uh, switch link here, and I get to name it and pick a latitude and longitude, so Seattle is at 47.61 latitude and negative 122.338 longitude. So we'll confirm this device. Now it'll go and find circuits that are attached to other devices that it knows about. So in this case it's found a circuit uh, going between the Seattle switch and the Chicago switch and another circuit going between the Seattle switch and Los Angeles switch. So we'll go ahead and verify that these are ready for production as well by clicking on them. We then get to name the circuit so that uh, we can select what users see when they uh, select this circuit in the user interface. So we'll name this one that goes from Chicago to Seattle as uh, Chicago Seattle 10 gig E1. And the one that goes from Los Angeles to Seattle as Los Angeles Seattle 10 gig E1. So now this switch has been fully provisioned and users can now provision across it. So let me go back into the user side of the interface. And now I get to select a work group. Uh, a work group is basically a set of uh, users who are allowed to provision to a set of ports. We have two work groups set up here for the demo. So let's select this demo work group. And uh, now I brought to an interface which allows me to see all the circuits that are already provisioned on the system inside my work group or allows me to create a new circuit. So let me go ahead and create a new circuit. This screen I get to give it a description, so let's call it uh, new test circuit. I can set a reserve bandwidth. So at this point the uh, reserve bandwidth isn't used for inner domain circuits, intra domain circuits, but is used for inner domain circuits. So we'll just leave this to zero, it doesn't actually do anything. And for the first uh, test we'll do a, a local domain circuit. And uh, so the next thing we do is select a set of endpoints. So we presented with the map, and uh, in the, for this demo we'll select an endpoint in Washington, D.C. This work group has access to only one endpoint on this switch, so we'll select that endpoint. And now we select a VLAN tag. Uh, our our uh, test point at the end of this demo is expecting frames to come in on uh, VLAN uh, 3006. If we want to, we could also select this as an untagged VLAN, uh, but this one we want to have tagged. So now we need to select the second endpoint. We'll select one in Los Angeles. Again, this work group only has access to one port on the Los Angeles switch. And uh, the, the endpoint on the end of this, again, expects the VLANs to come in with, uh, with tag 3006. So the next thing we do is select the path. And we get to select two paths, both a primary and a backup. Uh, the system will, allow us, will select the shortest path for us, or you can manually select a path. So in this case, it's found the path, uh, direct path from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles. The next thing we do is go to select the backup path. We can click the circuits manually. If we have an overlap in the path, it'll show it as a hash line. Or again, we can select the shortest path, which will select a non-overlapping path uh, with the shortest number of hops. So in this case, it's selected a circuit uh, around the, uh, the long side from Washington, D.C. through New York, Chicago, Seattle, back down to Los Angeles. The next thing we'll do is schedule this circuit. We can either have the system create the circuit immediately or create it at a date in the future. If we select later, we get a calendar widget that allows us to select a date and time for circuit creation or circuit removal. But let's just do this one now. The next step is to proceed to provisioning. And we get a screen that shows us the summary of what we're about to do, lets us assure that what we're doing is, is what we want. And if it looks OK, which in this case it does, we can select this submit circuit request. You can see in about a second it's returned this dialog that says our circuit's been provisioned. The circuit's now live on the network. The next thing that happens is we go to a screen which shows the status of the circuit. Uh, the purple line on the graph shows the round trip time in milliseconds between the two hosts. This is just for demo purposes. 
the UI will also show any traffic going between the uh, the two hosts on the circuit. So you can see the blue line at the top is showing that we are transmitting about 800 megabits per second. Uh, this graph will continue to fill in as uh, as the circuit progresses. We have an iperf going between the two end nodes here uh, for demo purposes. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the circuit between Washington DC and Los Angeles along the short path here so that we can watch the circuit reroute along the long path. You might be you might see a short blip in the iperf traffic and you should see an increase in latency indicated by the purple line on the graph. So I'm going to switch over to a terminal window here and I'm going to connect to the switch in Washington DC. And port number 18 on this switch is the port that connects between Washington DC and uh, Los Angeles, so I'm going to go ahead and shut that port down. So that port's been shut down, and this should be reflected in the UI within about five seconds. So you can see that the UI has indicated a path change from the short path to the long path, and the purple line is showing an increase in latency from about 50 to 60 milliseconds to about 115 milliseconds. So we'll go ahead and fail this circuit back in the other direction to the short path by logging in to the switch in Chicago. So the port in Chicago has been shut down, and the system has already uh, switched the path back to the short path, and that's now been reflected in the UI, and you can see that the purple line uh, showing round trip time is decreased again back down to about 60 milliseconds. So the next thing we're going to do here is remove the circuit, and again this can be an action that's scheduled now or in the future. We'll go ahead and remove this one now. And again, it gives us a summary screen that allows us to confirm what we're about to do is correct. We'll click Submit Removal, and within about a second, our circuit's removed from the network, and these VLAN tags are available on the endpoint for uh, use in, in new circuits. So now we're going to demonstrate an intradomain circuit. This leverages a customized version of the Oscars.6 software to communicate with other domains using the intradomain controller protocol. So again, we'll select a work group and select new circuit. This time, instead of local domain, we'll select inner domain. We'll give it a name. And this time, we'll need to select a bandwidth because the internet to ion domain does support reserved bandwidth. We'll select a bandwidth of 500 megabits per second. So now we're loading topology data from the Oscars topology service. This topology will show us all of the remote endpoints available in the inner domain service. The first thing we'll do is select an endpoint in the NDDI domain. We'll select ndadi.net.internet2.edu, and we'll select an endpoint in Washington, D.C., the same endpoint we're using for the intra-domain circuit. Again, we'll select a VLAN tag. This time, we'll use VLAN 3006 as well. The next thing we need to do is select a endpoint in the remote domain. We'll select the ion.internet2.edu domain and a test point we have connected to the Atlanta router labeled observatory. We'll pick VLAN tag 3006. And next we'll go to the scheduling step. Again, you can schedule this for now or a date in the future. We'll schedule this one for now. We get a summary of the circuit request. At this point, we're not able to select the path explicitly the inner domain protocol will select a path for us, and we can go back later and tune the path within the NDDI domain if we want to. We'll submit this circuit request, and the Oscar software will calculate the path and create the circuit. As we proceed through the Oscars, software, we'll see things like in-path calculation and in-setup, in-commit, 
Watt goes through the various stages of creating the circuit through the multiple domains. And now our circuit's been successfully provisioned across both the Internet2 ION and the NDDI domains. Now we're able to go back in and tune the path within the NDDI domain. So we'll click Edit Circuit. And now we're able to adjust the primary path and add a backup path. We'll leave the primary path the same. And we'll ask the system, system to pick a backup path for us. So you can see it, suggest, it suggested a non-overlapping backup path. We'll go ahead and move to the scheduling step. We want to make this change immediately. Submit the circuit request. And now a backup path has been added to our circuit. 